80% of all money printed in the history of America has been printed in the last two, three years. That's why we have a massive amount of inflation. That's why you have a lot of fake success today. That's why I have a lot of fake companies today. That's why I have a lot of uh, fake gurus today being exposed due to rising interest rates and inflation being the way it is. But the prospect of losing money has a stronger emotional effect than gaining a similar amount. But big financial swings in either direction, make a lot of money or lose a lot of money, can shake couples much the same way. So as a woman, uh, how, how important is it for you to have a man in your life that has financial security, that you can depend on him, that he's a provider? How important is it for him versus you being the provider, you having the financial windfall? I'm curious. Well, when you talk about financial security, you have to make sure that you're running on the same set of definitions as the person that you're talking to. Boom. So my idea of financial security might be different than his, and it might be different than yours. I'm not a, I'm not a material possessions person. I don't care if you are, but that's not me. I mean, you probably, next year, you'll probably catch me living in a van down by the river, honey, because <laughs> I just want to go off the grid. I like to be out in nature. Like, yes. that's my thing. I don't yeah. have purses. I don't have designer clothes. I don't really do a lot of that. So my idea of financial security, so when I was growing up, my grandfather was an entrepreneur and had a really successful window washing business. You don't think you can make a lot of money washing windows, but you can, okay? Sure. So, he taught me, but he had other stuff going on too. And the one thing that he taught me, and I remember having this conversation with him when I was 13, and he said, you want to make sure that you can live off one stream of income and everything else is... Like bonus. Bonus. And I always, like, I always carried that with me. So I always had a side hustle, man. If, if I had this job or I had this great job, I was always bartending somewhere. And I never touched that money. I actually put one of my brothers through college bartending. Wow. So it's So for me, financial security means... No debt, okay, or at least no bad debt, right? Because right. I understand that yeah, sometimes to make money, you yeah. have to spend yeah, money, yeah, right? Sure. And yeah. I get that, right? Yeah. So uh, no, no bad debt, and then I don't want a bunch of frivolous spending on stuff that doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that you can't have nice cars. It doesn't mean that you can't have you know, nice things, but I don't need to live in a house if it's just me and my husband or me and my person, I don't need to live in this like huge seven, eight, nine, ten thousand square foot house. Right. That just that's not for me. So from a financial security standpoint, I just want I, I'm looking for somebody who makes wise financial decisions. It doesn't necessarily matter how much money you have, if that makes sense. Any thoughts on that? That's great. <laughs> no, that, that that that's great because I mean one of the things mm -hmm. that I've noticed amongst a lot of. Uh, Couples, which is what's kind of pulled me away from the idea of, you know, committing to someone until I'm in a specific financial position. I think, what is it? Is I think like two-thirds of marriages start off with debt without their partner actually knowing. And it's about one-third of people who are in a relationship, one or the other person, end up hiding certain specific purchases so their partner doesn't get upset uh, in that specific... Cheating on them financially. Financially. And I think that's that's just to, due to the lack of core values when it comes down to money, not being on the same page, as you said, yeah. not being on the same page on you know what is you know financial literacy to you. Yeah. And, and, we, we get this all the time. Yeah. It is Financial Literacy Month, and, and people yeah. often ask, you know, you know, Gerald, like, uh, are you comfortable having joint accounts or are you comfortable having separate accounts? And I said, you have both. You have your yeah. joint account for our bills, our money, our future, our, our our children, our expenses, our lifestyle. But we have our own accounts. If you want to go out and buy some more ammo, <laughs> knock yourself out. Because I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stack it up. If I want to buy more cigars and, and whiskey and whatever the case may be, you know, uh, uh, Jordans, uh, I will, right? That, that's that's yeah. our thing. But we have our, we have our money. We're working together for the same, for the same mm -hmm. goal, which is sometimes a conversation that's not had previous to dating or getting no, married? Um, no, absolutely not. And, you know, there's a book called like 99 questions you should ask before, before you get married yeah, or something. Yeah, it should yeah. be like 120 questions because there's no self-defense <laughs> questions in there. Oh, there's nice, no nice. gun questions in there. Like I read the book. Uh, okay. You, you need to create a but amendment to it. Nobody yeah. wants to answer these personal finance questions. Yeah. And so I think that's where it ends up souring for me in yeah. the dating scene like do you ever okay so you've been married what eight years you said yeah do you ever do you ever watch like people like us dating and feel like you caught the last chopper out of knob <laughs> yeah exactly thank god <laughs> thank god i'm not single no more <laughs> Woo! It's hard i feel like you do uh, and so yeah, for, sure. <laughs> for, for me you know if we make it to date like five or six yeah. i'm i want to start talking about your finances sure. like you don't have to tell me how much money you have in the bank but like i want to know like do you have debt yeah can we talk about that? By the way, for yeah. those of you watching this right now, when do you think it's appropriate time for you to start talking about money in a dating relationship? Because, Jared, I gather you're not the person to date just to date. 
I'm not trying to waste my time. I want to know as soon as possible the situation that we are both in, right? And then we make a decision from there because I'm not marrying your bad debt. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, right. I don't want it. So, so process that before we take the next step together, so we can start fresh. Yeah, I mean that's why the that's why the first you know engagement failed. Yeah, is because we didn't ask these questions, and then we bought a house together before we got married, Mm. and then I saw. Yeah, because they go like they they're literally like combing through yeah. your whole life yeah. before they give you a mortgage. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, I'm not okay with this. We need to figure out a plan to get you out of this debt. Mm-hmm. Right? And he didn't want to do it. He wanted to buy a new truck. You're not buying a new truck. Well, now I'm the it. hag wife dumpster banshee <laughs> that won't let him buy a new truck <laughs> to all of his buddies when really I'm just trying to make wise financial decisions sure. here. Do you see? Did you have that conversation about cleaning your gun? <laughs> he knew. He knew what he, he was knew, getting he into. Uh, Jordan, let's play a clip of why this guy chooses to be single. Oh, this is funny one. Of lack of capital to start a relationship, high cost of living, and heavy competition from my fellow boy childs, poor infrastructure, pests and diseases, eating of fear by the other gender, attack from the neighboring boy childs, lack of beards, shortage of lines, Lessons from the other relationships, sponsors and sugar daddies, high cost of maintenance, and an availability to draw lines. Yes. Okay, so 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 every bit of that response and viewpoint was about external versus him improving as a man, mm-hmm. versus him improving as a provider, but him improving as a as a resourceful person. It was everybody's fault why I'm not getting married. Lack of capital. I was lack hoping of... you were going to say it. <laughs> okay, I'm, that, that was just my Because that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Right? M- made sense. I mean, but but Milton, that's that's a conversation that sadly a lot of men, a lot of guys, have. A lot of guys are having. They're, like, they're giving up before, you, like he said, competition between other men, sugar daddies, and sponsors. There's no, there's no security in, in themselves, man. There's no security in what they bring to the table. There's no, they have no foundation. And again, if, if you don't have a foundation or a set of values and principles that you fall back on, you have nothing to fall back on. Yeah. And if you don't have that and you, you have no sense of what direction you're heading towards in life, it's going to be extremely hard for you to be able to lead someone or yeah. have the sense of leading someone. So why yeah. even bother getting yeah. into that realm? Yeah. What's your, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, what about, would that also parlay with why women are single? Uh, or is it, there, know, is it different circumstances? If you, if you started asking people why they were single, honestly, everybody would have to break that down to the half decade. Because if you're if you're ta- if you if you're trying to tell somebody that you were never the problem, there were years in your life where you were the problem. <laughs> and if you're not willing to admit that, you have you are, are the, still problem. the problem. Yes, right. Okay. Self awareness. Yeah. So I think that I think that one thing that people constantly throw out there that I think is just a pipe dream is this idea of unconditional love. Okay, I think the only unconditional love that exists is between the father and us and between (sighs) fathers and mothers and their kids. Mm. I think that's the only unconditional love that exists, because if you want to date me and if you want to be with me and you want to marry me, my love comes with conditions. You're going to continue to improve. You're going to now it doesn't mean you can't trip and fall. It doesn't mean that mistakes aren't going to be made. It doesn't mean that forgiveness won't be there, but it means that you're going to continue to go up. Yeah. And not down. Yeah. Okay. And and that and that is something that a lot of people don't want to hear. They say, well, why can't you just love me unconditionally? Because you're a turd. <laughs> That's why. Because you're do because you're boring. Yeah. Because you're not doing anything to improve yourself. Yep. Because you sleep in every day. Because you eat like crap. Yeah. Right? Like, is it is it not do I not get to demand that my partner go to the gym if I'm expected to go to the sure. gym and look good? Yeah. Right? So why should I have to go date some fat guy that eats Doritos on his couch all day and plays Call of Duty? That's I right. shouldn't have to. But do you know how often I get shamed into that? Well, you, I'm a good guy and you wouldn't give me a chance. Listen, nah. good guys yeah. should be by default. That's nice right. guys, that should be the default. Yeah. Now Gentlemen, what makes respect, you interesting? Yeah. Yeah. Now I want to know what makes you interesting. Fellas, she's dropping... Gems for y'all to pick up. What's going to separate you from everybody else? Because you either step up or you step down. You, it's you, not hard. You do it's about not it. hard to identify when you're getting played. It's not hard to identify when somebody is lying to you and presenting themselves as something that they're not. Yeah. It's not difficult. If you dig a little bit, if you become yeah. a whole ass detective, you'll figure it out. <laughs> exactly. It's not hard. And then you just say, no, this is not for me. Bye. What's a, what's, what's a, re- what's a, if you can get, not, not to share your whole playbook with us, but what's a, what's a immediate, red, let's say a couple red flags for you. In the dating process, see if somebody's full of, full of crap or not. I think that when you start, uh, one of the questions that I always ask someone mm-hmm. on a first or second date is, uh, tell me about your best friend. 
Good I want to know who you surround yourself Good with. Good one. Tell me, I want to know the ins and outs of your best friend. How long have you known them? Yeah. What do you like to do together? Yeah. What do you talk about? Like, I want to know how you interact with the person who you consider to be your absolute best friend on earth. Great question. And if they say, oh, well, I don't, I don't know if I have a best friend. That's a red flag for me. You better have one. How come? Because that's who, who doesn't walk through life and connect with someone on such a cosmic level that you want to go on trips with them and you want to share your life with them and you want this person to be in your wedding and you want yeah. this person wow. to be around your kids. Who, if you can't connect that way with somebody, you're not going to connect with me. Wow. Yeah. It's not going to happen. By the way, my, my question to Sheena is who do you call when we get into an argument? That's a good one. Because yeah. I want to know if you're calling the next boyfriend. Yeah. A member of the opposite sex, another uh, male shoulder that you're crying on, but, and you're talking about him, what is he doing? He's, th- 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 he's just waiting in the wings, like, oh, I keep crying on my shoulder, baby, because... <laughs> <laughs> right? right? And, and she thinks, you know, oh, he just cares about me. No, he's, no, trying, to, he's trying to get him... I just, I think too many people, opening. I think too many people wallow in, in pity of singleness, and I think singleness is a gift. I think it's a time to to do things and, and start moving and, you know, making goals and setting an example. And then I think that people will just, you know, I've, I've come to the conclusion, I'm not going to meet my person on a dating app. I'm not going to do it. It's just, it's not something it's from what I'm looking for something so specific that it's just, I don't think it's ever going to happen there. I'm not going to read somebody's profile and go, that's the one. (laughs) 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 But then most people, can't even use proper punctuation nowadays. Yeah, like that's, yeah. And that's a turnoff for me too. I'm like, no, I'm just not going to do and it. And they're presenting their best face, their best self, their best edited photo, the best interests. In, right? You want to know who they are in the worst moments for me. Yeah. I want to know mm-hmm. who they are in the worst moments. Like for example, business partnerships. I want to know how you act with money or, or act with our brand when things aren't going right for us as, as an organization. And, and you know, that's your character. That's, that's when your character is exposed. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.